on CRM Digital Talk. Welcome back. You're listening to Cindy Laverty Show. It is my pleasure to have you here today, and I hope you will continue to listen week in and week out as I continue to bring you fascinating, wonderful guest. That is my promise to you. I will always bring you the cream of the crop. No uh, dud guests on this show. Anyway, uh, Daphne Rose Kingma is my guest today. And if you've missed any of the show, it will be archived on my website later on today at Cindy Laverty show.com. And uh, you can find Daphne at Daphne Kingma.com. That's D-A-P-H-N-E-K-I-N-G-M-A.com. We're talking about her book, The Ten Things to Do When Your Life Falls Apart. Daphne, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. My pleasure. It is my pleasure, too. So, okay, so I find it interesting that when bad things happen, the first thing many people do is to blame God. And I'm not sure God is to blame. I mean, we were never promised a life without challenges, were we? No, we weren't, but we had fantasies. And I I just, (laughs) you know... I, I think people blame God and they blame themselves, too. That's yourself is always handy. But I, I think we're just shocked by the difficult things that come up in life because somehow, you know, we did have a fantasy that somehow if we played our cards right, we'd get the magic, idyllic life and there wouldn't be any problems and everything would just, you know, float along endlessly well, without and- challenges. And we've been told what the magic idyllic life is. Yes. It's not the same for, it certainly wasn't the same for Henry David Thoreau as it was for David Rockefeller. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> and I think each of them in their own way have their own magic idyllic life. Yes, that's right. And, and but I think in this culture, we have been very, there's something about the American dream that seems to be a dream of entitlement, a sort of you can have everything kind of thing. And you're entitled to everything. I have a problem with that. Yes. We create what we get. Yes. So, I mean, I think these kind of internal myths of how life should be put us, find us coming up very short in times of crisis. It's like, wow, I wasn't prepared for this, or this is shocking, or this is difficult. And I want to go back a moment and talk a little bit more about the default, Cindy, that we were talking about, which is that, you know, a crisis shows us, okay, here's what I always do. You know, I've always Mm -hmm. handled it by running to the refrigerator. But a crisis is an opportunity to say, well, what should I do differently this time? Maybe this experience is asking me to look at some other capacity in myself and to grow beyond these default behaviors, which now are not so more, you know, not so effective. And so we have a chance here, and of course it's difficult, but we have a chance to say, okay, I used to do that. That got me from childhood to adulthood. But what can I, what must I bring to the situation now? And I think must is the operative word. Mm -hmm. When you must make a change, that's when you make it. Yes, exactly. Tony Robbins is the first person I heard say that, and it really resonated for me. Yes. When your needs go to a must, that's when things happen. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's the beauty, of course, of a crisis, because you are in that must state. It's like, you know, your house is floating down the river, and you can't just sit in the living room on the couch watching <laughs> TV because the couch is, you know, getting waterlogged. Right, right. But well, that leads me to what my next question was that I wanted to ask you, because it goes to the do something different. And it's and you talk about imagine a future you can't imagine. And that's a really fun exercise. It gets you out of your stuck place and into imagine a life you couldn't imagine. So let's talk about that for a second. Well, it means be open for a greater solution than you yourself could figure out. You know, I mean, when we're at these turning points in life, it's like what we can imagine is often what we've already experienced or you right. know, what we've observed. And so I'm inviting people to hold that place open that says, okay, I'm going to imagine that something I couldn't even figure out on my own could show up. It's leaving a space for the, you know, the miracle, the 
possible, the strange, the different to show up. And well, and I can honestly say that when you do that, it happens because that's what's happened in my life. That's a wonderful testament, Cindy. You know, I mean, I, I was fully ensconced in the, um, you know, corporate world of marketing and advertising. And somehow on a Sunday night, the universe just changed my life when my ex-father-in-law asked me if I would, you know, take pay his bills and check on his wife when he had open heart surgery. Wow. And here I am today. Yes, here you are. <laughs> teaching the world how to do that. And it wasn't exactly what I thought I would be doing. I mean, I really didn't. Right. But right. I said yes. Well, there's a wonderful saying, you know, it's the mark of the divine upon you when you find yourself being led someplace that you hadn't meant to go. You know, it's like, how did I end oh, up Oh, say, say that again. Say that one it's more time. The, it's the mark of the divine, the mark of God, or whatever right. you want to call it, upon you when you find yourself being led where you hadn't meant to go. It's like, wow, how did I end up here? This is amazing. Right, right. And I would say that's true for me, too, about the many books I've written. I didn't say, well, I think I'll sit down and write a dozen self-help books in my life, and I'll teach people how to love, and then I'll talk to them about how to live through a crisis. It was, it was again, just like this book, a friend of mine many years ago said, Daphne, you do all this emotional healing work and all these people are going through the crisis of ending a relationship. You really ought to write a book about that. Mm. And I said to myself, I should. That's the last thing I ever imagined doing. And so, you know, just like that, I love your story about your father-in-law. It's like we get these messages and, and they shift our life around and sometimes the messages become a crisis, or it's like, right. well, how am I going to do that? Right. Okay, I'm being asked to do that. Okay, I will. But there's a lot of surrender and change that's involved. Well, I think that's the beauty of it. And, you know, once you say yes to the universe and you just sort of open up your hands and go, okay, take me where I'm supposed to go. I right. still I still fight it sometimes. Well, and then yeah. I sit there and go, okay, Cindy, stop, because this isn't serving you well at all. Right. Well, we all fight it because it's it's part of human nature to imagine that we're in control. And, you know, as I say, you are in control until life demonstrates otherwise that you're not all right Daphne I gotta take a quick break stay with us you're listening to Cindy Laverty show I'll be right back 